1957, unique hybrid bees were created in Brazil. Scientists expected that these bees would produce more honey, but something went wrong. Oh the insects turned out to be incredibly aggressive and attacked anyone they saw. By the 80s, the killer bees had reached the United States. Today, they continue to spread across the world and it feels like a horror movie. So in today's video, you'll learn what happens to a person when it's stung by this insect. It sounds incredible, but a bee can take away your life. And do bees really die after biting us? Let's find out. So, you were stung by a bee. Most likely, you're not very happy about it. That'd probably be your first reaction. But let's take a look at the bite. In about two minutes, the skin will turn slightly red. Six minutes later, the area around the bite will turn white. And in about a half an hour, a blister will appear. Bee venom has a very strong effect on all vertebrates so the pain will only get worse. After a day, the wound will be very red and it, it, it itches so much. Oh. Melatin is the main component and the major pain producing substance of honeybee venom. Fortunately, if you don't have any allergies, your body can fight against it. But if you're allergic, then game over. We'll talk more about bee venom later, but first let's see why bees behave like this. Why do you think a bee can sting at all? Scientists have some ideas and hypothesis. Maybe it's a bee radar or something like that. Studies have shown that bees most often attack people when they pose a threat to their hive. If you trespass on bees' territory, you'll be lucky if you get off with just one sting. When a bee stings another creature, it releases an alarm pheromone. And if the bee then gets mortally wounded, it releases a greater amount of it. Can you guess what happens then? The presence of huge quantities of alarm pheromones near the hive attracts other bees, and they'll be ready to attack any outsider. This will continue until the threat is eliminated, so you only have two options. You can either run or die. And remember that water won't save you because the pheromones do not wash away, so the bees will keep attacking you once you reappear on the surface of the water. By the way, people say these pheromones smell like banana. Who would have thought bees don't like bananas? For those who've never been stung by a bee, we should probably describe how it feels. Well, you remember the screaming person? <laughs> it's believed that the pain from a bee sting is comparable to pinching the earlobe. You can try it right now, but be careful. In fact, there's a whole pain index known as Schmidt's scale, and honeybees are the pain level two, just the second level. In fact, their sting is almost painless compared to other insects. It's far from pain level four. It includes, for example, the bullet ant bite. Schmidt described these sensations as pure, intense, brilliant pain, like walking over flaming charcoal with a three-inch nail embedded in your heel. Now, we don't know how a respected scientist knows how a nail in the heel feels when walking over hot charcoal, but let's try not to judge. Surely he's working for the sake of science. Other options to describe a fourth-level bite are blinding, fierce, and shockingly electric and torture. You're chained in a flow of an active volcano. For it's absolutely excruciatingly debilitating, incapacitating, just shuts you down, just absolute sheer pain. It's worth mentioning that the person who created this list has exposed himself to over a thousand bites of various insects during his life. Probably the pain was unbearable. Yeah, tell that to my pinky toe. <laughs> That's unreal. But back to bees. You probably know that a sting is fatal for a bee. After losing its stinger, it dies. You could say it gives its life to protect the hive, just like a real knight. But why do bees die? The shape of the stinger is to blame. It's barbed in such a way that it gets stuck in the victim's skin, especially if it's a mammal. The insect can't free itself after the bite. It twitches and leaves the sting along with a part of its tiny organism. Muscles, nerves, a fragment of its digestive tract. After this, death comes in a matter of minutes. Only queens can sting an unlimited number of times and remain intact. Their stingers have a smoother structure and therefore these bees are able to inflict many poisonous stabs, even in a row. So don't make the queen angry. And what happens if a bee stings another insect? Of course, bee stings were not designed by nature to protect them from people. Otherwise, they'd be attached to the bee in a better way. Their stings are ideal for fighting with other insects. A bee can sting other insects hundreds of times a day until it gets tired or bored. And the bee venom is also a really formidable weapon. But it's not the only weapon they have. Some bees have learned to cook their opponents. 
That's not a figure of speech. In this case, insects form a sphere around a hornet and start to vibrate synchronously, creating powerful ultrasonic waves. Researchers say that in this case, the air inside the swarm gradually warms up to about 40 degrees Celsius. It goes without saying that the hornet doesn't have a chance against the heat and finally dies. This is a very cruel way to kill. But the bees have reasons to behave like this. Take a look at this picture. There are hundreds of dead, headless bees. These are the consequences of a a hornet attack on a beehive. Yeah, nature can be very cruel. Fortunately, the heat attack only works with hornets, for now. It would not like to experience that. We're only affected by bee venom, and our organisms have long learned to cope with it. In this photo, you can clearly see how the temperature rises around the sting. This means that our body is fighting against the venom. We have to thank our immune system for that. The bad news is that the bee venom dissolves in water, and most of the human body is made up of it. So the toxins spread almost instantly. Whoosh! Now you're 0.01% bee. White blood cells are the first to fight against bee venom. They're kind of a rapid response squad. You're still screaming and sweating wearing while your white blood cells are already fighting against antigens in the bee venom. As the fight continues, the redness and the temperature will keep rising. When stinging, the bee injects a portion of melatonin into your body. While the white blood cells are busy, it destroys the red blood cells and stimulates the pain receptors. Melatonin is also responsible for the itching, but your body knows how to react. In return, it sends histamine, an organic compound that fights different infections like a SWAT unit to fight against the melatonin. However, it also causes swelling. But hey, we don't say anything when superheroes destroy entire cities while saving humanity, right? But the most amazing thing is that in the fight against bee venom, we use our kidneys. Even if the bee stings your pinky toe, once the bee venom starts damaging the cellular tissue in your body, the kidneys start working to eliminate this damaged tissue. So they're aware of what's happening, like a task force. But don't worry about your kidneys. You could be stung many times for them to fail. Or a bee should sting you right in the kidney. In rare cases, a sting can cause an overreaction of the body and cause death. A study from the University of Melbourne has shown that 25 people have died from bee stings in Australia in the last 13 years. At the same time, 27 Seven people have died from snake bite. Nevertheless, we're scared of snakes, but don't usually worry about bees and just brush them off, literally and figuratively. But let's face it, bees are actually our friends. There are many useful things that these little workers do for us. Have you heard of bee therapy? Trigger warning, this can be shocking because people, well, they allow bees to repeatedly sting them. Not for pleasure, of course. Bee venom helps to fight the symptoms of Lyme disease, an infection transmitted by ticks. There are special medicines for this, but they're not cheap. At the same time, you can order live bees online in a couple of clicks, and their regular bites help you get rid of the symptoms. The only drawback is that the bees can't survive the process. Should they die for our health? Tell us your opinion in the comments. While some people order bees online, this old man went a little further. He became Lord of the Bees and wears them as a costume. The bees are alive, by the way. Apparently, Bee Man uses special pheromones which attract these insects. He feeds his frightening friends beforehand because the fed bee is unlikely to sting you. But what if 30 or 40 of these bees suddenly get out of control and feel threatened? Most likely, he won't survive. However, honey collectors risk their lives all the time, especially if they work to find unique types of honey, which can only be found in Nepal. Twice a year, the bravest men from the local villages risk their lives climbing the steep cliffs of the area. In this place, they find the hives of special wild bees known as Apis dorsata laboriosa. It's the largest species of honeybee in the world, and its nectar has hallucinogenic properties. Now we know why Winnie the Pooh is always so happy. Locals believe that this honey has powerful healing properties, but you shouldn't eat too much because, well, surely you know how hallucinogens work. Now imagine you ate this curious honey and suddenly see bees winking at you. Okay, the last spoon was definitely too much. It's time we all went home. But while you're still here, take a look. These tiny creatures somehow know how to build colonies and scare away predators. They create a wave like fans at a football stadium. If we were predators, we would surely stay away from these bees. What if their favorite team lost today? Or worse, what if they won? The human body is amazing, and bees are amazing too, but you should stay away from them. Instead, give us a like. Unlike bees, we don't bite, and we can be useful too. Hey, have I told you about the healing subscription to our channel? Hey!